Hello and welcome to a Train Simulator Classic video. My name is Lewis and today I'm going to be giving you a little bit of a video update on the latest release for my Midland Railway Butterley route which is available on on-track simulations. Uh, the route has recently had a version 2.2 update come out and uh, that's brought quite a few changes to the route so I just wanted to give you a bit of a run through what's been changed and what to look out for and just give a bit of a, uh, an idea on why, why you should download it. So we'll start off by just having a quick run through the change log itself just to look at exactly the things that have changed in this update to show why it's worthwhile re-downloading if you've already got it or downloading for the first time. Let me just load that up and that will just stay on the screen and I'll have a quick read through for you. So for the Midland Railway Butterley version 2.2 change log, one of the biggest updates that I've managed to do for this route, uh, for the, this individual update, is that the requirements list has now been updated. So previously I'd seen some feedback that there was quite a lot of requirements for this little route, which is a fair criticism. Um, it came from the fact that I'd built this route with personal use in mind and then decided to release it afterwards. Um, so what I've tried to do is improve that situation it's not fixed i wouldn't say it's fixed but it, it's improved so riviera line in the 50s which is exeter to kingswear uh north somerset railway the european loco and asset pack uh, the marketplace canal town and platform packs the lavender line and the vulcan productions grass pack have all been removed from the requirements you no longer require them to run the route they're not used at all uh, also, the UK train sim freeware scenery packs have been reduced to now only use the clutter pack and the clutter packs are only used for a few little bits of detail. So if you don't want to install that, the route will run fine. It's not going to break anything. You'll just have a couple of milk bottles. It is important to note, though, that some of these packs are still required for scenarios. So nothing has changed for scenarios in this update. The scenarios can still be checked against the scenario supplement document that's included and that'll tell you everything that's included they are still requirement heavy because i've tried to make them accurate um but if people want some default scenarios let me know and i can always do that in the future i can i'm more than happy to swap out or create some new scenarios that just use default rolling stock also for the requirements list the, I've added in the previously omitted Freeware Karma 99 requirements. So that's the Great Western Railway Trackside Pack and the Point Rodding Kit. They are from DP Simulation, so they're completely free to download and there's a link included now in the manual. Also, I have added TS Academy. That's uh, free, included with every copy of Train Simulator Classic, I believe. So everyone should have access to that. Just need to make sure you have got it downloaded on Steam. The route also and scenarios now also use the Armstrong Power of Sky and Weather Enhancement Pack version 2. Um, I didn't see any point in leaving this on version 1. I'd have upgraded to version 2 myself. There's a lot of more interest in weather op opportunities that you can use with that pack. So I decided to update it. And it just means that there's better functionality for people going forward. The scenarios will play as intended if you've got it. The good news is that if you don't own that pack, all the scenarios just use the default um, weather trigger, which means that the scenario will just load with default weather if you don't have the Armstrong Powerhouse Sky and Weather version 2. So you will still be able to run the scenarios. The next change for version 2.2, which is significant, is there are a number of new custom assets that I've built for the route for this update. Um, so we've got Swanick Footbridge now as a custom. Butterley Footbridge also is a custom. Uh, Swanick Ground Signal Box and Shop. There's also the Swanick Demonstration Signal Box. Uh, Swanick Tabernacle, so that's the little tin church. There's also a Midland Road Butterley No Access sign. And also Midland Road Butterley No Access Barrier. Butterley Causeway. Hammersmith Platform, so that's the active platform and the disused one. Hammersmith Station sign. Then Butley disuse platform, and then lastly the Golden Valley Light Railway workshop. So quite a few new custom assets there. Um, I think about thirteen or fourteen. So it really brings up 
the total custom asset count for the route. I think the custom asset count for the route is now 50 plus. So this freeware route comes with a hell of a lot of cust free custom assets that I've built. Really just, and it really does improve the authenticity and the atmosphere of the route. You just feel so much more like you're not in a, um, like a generic, not even Kuju, but DTG route, like just kit by stuff everywhere. It, it feels like it's a unique route and yeah, where the real line is, it's much, much better, I think. Then move on to, there's been numerous scenery tweaks and changes across the route. So I've reduced the use of 3D foliage to try and improve the frames per second on areas of the route. Mostly it's been around Swanwick and looking towards Swanwick from Butterley. I uh, relayed the track for Swanwick Pilot Siding 2 just because it was pretty out of place and pretty inaccurate. But unless you've used that specific siding, so that's literally just the siding off of Platform 4 um, going towards Butterley. So it's in the shot behind this document. Um, most people probably won't have used that. If if you have used that, you'll just need to go into your scenario and replace your, your stock. Also, I've relayed the Swanwick Loco preparation sidings to remove unrealistic curve at the station end that had a little bit of a, a wonk in it so that's been fixed now um again if you have used that in a scenario you'll just need to edit your scenario and replace the stock i've also relayed a number of pieces of track across the line mostly it's at swanick butley and hammersmith this is because there was a weird signaling bug that had occurred so there was like some break in the track for some reason and that meant the signals weren't interacting correctly so the only unfortunately the only way to fix this was just to completely rip up the track and redo it but those look like they have fixed it looks like they haven't come back since um so if you have made any scenarios for version 2.4 on the route i would recommend just check check them um because your stock will likely be incorrect and if you load up your scenario it will say that there's broken consist so do just make sure you have a quick check of that uh, there's been a number of signal bug fixes. So there's been two bug signals at Butley that have been fixed. One was from Platform 2 looking towards Swanwick. I think the other was coming into Butley from Swanwick. Um, the junction signal there. Fixed the repeater signal at Swanwick. So that's the signal just behind this document as well. As well. Um, looking towards Butley. The repeater now works with the signal beyond it. Uh, appeared to fix the Swanwick gantry signal when entering platform 3 or 4 when coming from Butley. Fixed an issue with Swanwick East signal, so that's the one that allows you into the platform when coming from Riddings. Um, previously, if there was a train already in the platform, it was still showing as clear when it should have shown as danger, so it does now work and shows danger. Uh, also, I've added signals to the Arrowash Valley main line, so there weren't any proper signals on the main line before. These have all now been added and function. Uh, extended the scenery around Riddings as well, so you can now use the main line section to come in and out of Butley if you wanted to do so. Um, there's enough running scenery there for you to get in and out, and there's enough little details on the main line section too. Changed the main line track to use concrete sleeper variants now, not wooden. And then also added and changed portal markers across the route for better scenario functionality. So there was only a limited number of portals in places, and some had like dragged the portal across multiple tracks rather than just having them for individual tracks that's now all been updated and just means that you should have much a much easier time if you want to create a scenario that uses portals on this line and then there have been various other tweaks to little bits of details as well there's also a new route menu picture so that's how you'll know that you've installed the correct version um the new route menu picture is a peak in Swanic platform three so you'll know you've got the right one if that's the case and then lastly, the route now uses the Vulcan production track rule rather than the West Coast mainline Trent Valley track rule, which removes the issue of you having no track if you don't have West Coast mainline Trent Valley installed. However, I would seriously recommend you have West Coast mainline Trent Valley installed before using this route because it uses that for a, a lot of stuff. Like is it? It's a pretty heavy used dependency as that was used for the base route, so that's what the ground textures use and all sorts of other bits. Right, so now that we've gone through the change log, you can see there are quite a number of changes for version 2.2. We will jump to Hammersmith and we'll do a quick run of the line to show you some of the new features that have been added. So then, here we are at Hammersmith. 
we're going to be taking 31271 down the line today on a nice five coach trip. So we'll start off by having a quick look around Hammersmith to see what changes have been made. So, as mentioned on the change log, we've got brand new custom platforms. So this is the disused platform. It's got a nice grassy texture on it. Uh, very simple model. It's just straight platform. But looks a bit more of the parks. It's got the same stone texture as Monarch and Butley platforms have. So it makes it a bit more in keeping. And I just, I just prefer it personally to what was there before. Um, because it just looks a little less generic. It was also had to be done... To allow me to remove the extra to Kingswear requirement as it was previously using a platform from that pack. We also have the proper Hammersmith used platform. I say used but it's really just for running around the train here. There's not really anybody who gets on and off. Um, very similar asset to be honest. It's a narrower platform which is nice because previously this platform being custom uh, being I think also from the extra Kingswear where assets was a bit wider, so I managed to make the platform a little bit narrower, which is nice, more like the real thing. Um, it's got custom textures, which are in keeping with Butley and Swanick. It's the right size as well, which is good. And it's got that worn feeling. It's, I, I think it looks a whole lot nicer. It makes Hammersmith more worthwhile coming down to. I didn't enjoy coming down to Ham Hammersmith before, particularly on the route, because it just felt generic, like, wasn't a whole lot going off here whereas now at least there's something of note it's a bit more unique it, it looks like more of the real thing and then as mentioned as well in the change log we've got the hammersmith platform sign which is taken from a photo of the real thing just set as hammersmith and it's the birthplace of sir barnes wallace the inventor of the bouncing bomb for the dam busters raid amongst other things so that's pretty much everything at Hammersmith. There have been some tweaks to detail, um, some changes to the platform scenery here, which was done from finding some new photos and visiting the line myself. So I'm much, much happier with this. Changed a couple of fences and stuff. So this is all a bit nicer. Possibly added in that signal that wasn't there before too. We've still got the same Hammersmith signal box. That was included in the last release. That was in version 2. They're looking quite nice. Don't think there should be any real changes to that. From what I can recall. So we'll jump into the cab. And we'll make sure that our path is set. Because we're in a free room. So points will be all over the place. Make sure that we can get down to Swanick. Riddings as well. There we go. So we'll just do a run from Hammersmith down to Riddings, and that will be that. So let's get our train moving. Signal is cleared for us. That's one annoying thing with using these uh, signals is that they do seem to only operate when the train is moving. It will stay at danger until you f first move. It's a shame, but these signals do offer the best functionality I could get, and they work nicely with the North Yorkshire Moors Railway signals too, so they're going to stay here for now. I did look at using some other signals for this release, but they just don't have enough uh, variants included that's been the main issue. You may notice already, um, perhaps you don't, but we are now moving on to one of the next custom assets that was mentioned, and this is Butterley Causeway. So this is the little causeway that runs over the reservoir. This was previously a kit bash, again using a lot of extra Kingswear assets. It's now fully custom. Um, the only thing that's not custom about the bridge is the wooden fence slats. They just use the freeware scenery pack from DTG, the AP pack, um, so that I could get a few variants. But I'm much, much happier with this. Yeah. 
that's not a bad effort. So here we are at Butterley Station. There are a few changes here as well to be seen. One is the Midland Railway Centre, no public access beyond this point sign. So this is used at a couple of places on the route, mostly at both ends of the platform here at Butley. Quite an iconic sign. Again, I think I've seen a couple of people mentioning the fact that these weren't included before. They're very easy to do, just taken from a real photograph that I'd taken. And now in place. So it just means if you want to take a screenshot of a train coming across the reservoir or leaving you've got that little bit of extra detail to make it look more like the real thing also little changes to the end of the platform scenery here at Butley this has been redone from what it was previously and you may have noticed Butley station footbridge so this is a brand new custom model that I've made really really pleased with how this has come out as well with Swanwick footbridge it's based on the real footbridge um, it's not perfectly accurate like the steps are slightly different for Butley footbridge it's not 100% it's close enough that you probably wouldn't be able to notice unless I point it out like I am doing right now uh, pretty pleased how it's come out the texturing and the details have all looked come out pretty well in my opinion um, and it looks a lot more like the real thing compared to the little kit bash I'd done with that default DTG bridge that's used on every route they release this is so much better it looks like the real thing it fits properly to the platform which is one of the nicest things the dtg bridge had to be sunk in and was squashed through scaling whereas this actually fits correctly now so it fits with the other bits of custom scenery like the uh, alfred model railway building and the model railway sign the actual platform itself it also fits going across to the other side because as you can see we've only got short leg supports here whereas there's longer leg supports on this side as this side is in real life these leg supports come down onto the platform ramp here you can also see this joins onto butley disused platform so this is again just like hammersmith platform uses the same texture and is a custom platform model for the disused platform on this side So yeah, that's Butterley Station. believe all the new customs I've done down this end, but I'm really, really pleased how this has come out. I think it really improves the look. And if you want to take a screenshot now, you've got so much less non-specific custom assets here. It's so much more like the real thing because it's pretty much all custom apart from the, the road bridge, which I may do in the future. You never know. Watch this space. Uh, we can have a quick look at Butterley Yard again. Just so you can see what is included. This is but silly yard. So you, you've got the custom loading dock, goods dock here, which was included in version two. It's part of Butley's custom platform. You've got Butley signal box, which again was a uh, custom from version two. A little Butley ground frame uh, information sign, again from the real line taken from a photograph that I took and then you've got Butterley DMU shed so plenty of customs around here to make it look like the real thing it does look very nice it's starting to really ooze character I think so we'll watch our train depart from here really does have some atmosphere. So now on our uh, run down to Swanwick Junction, 
whilst the line is only three and a half miles long, so it's very short, I think what's nice with that is because it's so short, it's been much easier for me to create as many custom assets as I've needed to. And I think that makes this route a lot more fun because it is really like the real thing. Whilst the line isn't very long, it, the there's less playability, I guess, maybe in TS. You've got far more atmosphere. It's far less like one of these larger preserved routes that are out there where you, you get very little customs. There's the sonic gantry signal. You can see that's working nicely. Still no custom at the moment for the carriage and wagon works on the right there, but uh, maybe one day in the future. The, the actual asset that's there already, um, I think it's from Trent Valley, is pretty accurate. Like The only thing that's wrong with it is there's a join on the shed doors where the middle line is, but considering there's always stock in the way, you don't really use that shed. I'm not too fussed about it. It's not a massive priority at the moment. But here we are coming down into Sonic Junction. see you might have just spotted that the no access sign on the right there was glitching through that fence annoyingly that seems to be a TS limitation seems to be that assets for some reason flicker through lofts though even though this sign is completely in front of the uh, fence loft you go far enough away it starts to flicker and I've tried what I can with that. The only way you can stop it doing that is by moving it like a meter away from the loft. So annoying, but not a whole lot I can do about that at the moment. But yep, yeah, that does highlight that this sign is used again down here at Swanwick Junction. So then other changes for Swanwick Junction, we've got Swanwick Footbridge. As you can see, it's a different design to Butterley. It's fairly similar, because I'll be honest, I built Swanwick Footbridge first and then just adapted it to make Butterley's. So the footbridges are basically Swanwick footbridge, but Butley footbridge is an adapted version of Swanwick to make it as close to Butley as I could get with my free time patience allowance, basically. Um, so Swanwick footbridge is actually pretty accurate to what I could do um, and has quite a lot of more intricate detail. So you've got all this lattice work underneath the um, footbridge here, some interesting bits. These are quite fun to do. So these were done with taking photos of the real thing and then creating alpha textures um, so that you've got these transparent areas. Again, same up here. You've got these little bits of detail up on the top here too. Slightly different design in that Butley's has little struts that come down and out and under for every section, whereas Swanwick just has these little divider sections for each part here and then I've also done it with the texture behind to make the thicker part so you've got the bit that comes down like that and you've also got a little um, support plate underneath it's slightly hard to tell because it's a uh, dark colour and then you've got the three over hoops too here which have little sections that come out and go around too so it's a bit different but unique and then also with Swanwick is the other side of the stairwell is on the opposite side. So you've got um, like a, a number two almost, isn't it? Um, one staircase is on either side. Again, the change this makes to the station for me personally is immeasurable. You've gone from having everything on the station custom apart from the footbridge, and the footbridge kind of ruining the scene because obviously the footbridge goes over the train. It dominates the image whereas now it's custom it looks so much better right it, it fits in it's the same as butterly it fits in with the other custom assets around it and makes the scene look so much more complete 
And it's nice as well because with Swanwick Yard, you can see the footbridge from pretty much everywhere. So it really adds to the atmosphere. So we'll then go down to the end of Swanwick footbridge, uh, platform even and have a look at the no access barrier that was mentioned in the changelog. So this is something that permanently sits across uh, platform one here at Swanwick. And because this is a public crossing point here, that, that sits there to stop people from just walking onto the line. I debated doing it as a scenery. Uh, as a scenario scenery item so that you could place it in each scenario uniquely but then I was like it, it won't sit in the same place every time and it's very rare that the line actually use platform one they just always keep stock sat in it so none of the scenarios I use ever have anything move here so I was like it arguably is easier to do it as a proper scenery item and just have it sat there permanently So then if we move on, you can see we've got Swanwick signal box and the little huts around. So they were from version two, same with the little information board here that you can read. So we're just going to have a quick look at carriage and wagon work. So like I said, this is not a custom. This is an asset from, I think, Trent Valley. It might be Weirdale, actually. It's not 100% right because you can see that you've got the doors either side and there's a strut in the middle where this line goes. But you generally always have stock sat here so you can't see it properly. And the actual sides of the building and the roof of the building are all really accurate to how the real building is. It's, it is a wooden structure like this and it's about the same tone of colour. So I'm quite happy to leave that. Moving across to the West Shed, the Princess Royal Class Locomotive Trust. This was a custom asset that came with version 2. It's no real change up here. There's been a couple of little tweaks to the embankment here, but that's kind of it. Pretty happy with how this is looking. Nice little home for the Duchess and the uh, 4MT tank engines. So then if we move back down to Swanwick Yard, you can see we've got the side of the Matthew Kirtley Museum here. I've not done a custom for the Richard Levick uh, boiler workshop or whatever it is at the back here. I have changed the asset over so it was a kit bash before with a different asset in the middle but because I wanted to remove North Somerset Railway as a requirement for the route um, that middle building there has just changed. I may do this as a custom one day but I'm not too fussed about it at the moment because it is at the back of the route out the way. And it's not too dominating. It, it it works fine there. Then, yep, you've got the Matthew Kirtley Museum Hall here. So, Exhibition Hall. And they, they do keep some operating locos on the right-hand side as well. That was, again, version 2. You've also got the Golden Valley, Valley Light Railway little shed at the bottom here. Again, that came with version 2. I haven't done the Steam Workshop as a custom here. This is... A default asset. I have got photographs um, for it, so I may do it in the future, but it's not high on the priority list at the moment. It's just an auxiliary building, basically. We've then got the Golden Valley Light Railway Butley Park Station. So this is custom platform station and then signage, and then also a custom water tower. So yeah, nice little bit of detail here for Butley Park Station. And again, this makes this look really nice for the Golden Valley Light Railway. Behind that, we've got the Orc Truck Heritage Centre and the Midland Road Transport Group. So this is the little road museums here. Again, this was a custom that came with version 2. It just really adds to the atmosphere of this side of the line. Uh, we'll move up to the entrance first. So there's not really any customs happened up here or any change. You've got a couple of uh, signs from the real line here. This is a toilet uh, room on the left here. This is just using a set of Carlisle waiting room asset. Maybe I'll do this one day in the future. I've got plenty of photos to do this, but again, it's only a little building. It's not too important because the back is just brick like that, I think. Different colour, but not that important. But then we do move to one of the new assets from version 2.2, .2, and this is Swanwick Tabernacle, which is the tin church. This is brand new custom for this version. 
as it's a very distinct building i was quite keen to make this for the the new release so that adds that extra bit of character again previously this was using like a stone church from weird l which was about the right shape but definitely not the right color so as you can see this is a nice custom lots of details to make it pretty accurate to the real thing even got a little bell up the top that i've modeled really pleased with how this all came out really pleased with the textures as well actually to be honest that's come out really nicely and it uh brightens up this corner of the route so then we'll move back towards the station and we have got a few more custom assets so we'll take a look at the this was the old swanic junction ticket office that it used to be on the platform i believe um and this is now a little second hand bookshop so this sits here it's got this interesting design because obviously it's a proper midland railway signal box I, can't, I don't know where this one's actually from um and then you've got the interesting brick and concrete steps and fence metal fence that go the pipe fence around the side for getting up which is how it is in real life so nice and interesting what i really like as well is it backs onto the track here so if you are going between the diesel depot you've got this proper asset here whereas before it was just a little brick signal box we've then got the demonstration signal box so this is this one here again this is a really unique signal box because it's a traditional midland railway signal box at the top but then underneath it is brick and that i believe is because the original base had rotten away when the uh, midland railway center took it so they built uh, a brick base for the signal box i really like this i think it looks really really cool so yep this is the display signal box it doesn't function for the line it's just so that people can go up to the top and have a look around i'm really happy with this how, how this has come out i think it it looks really nice it really adds to the look of the route when you're looking back towards the sheds it's got that proper middle railway look it looks a bit faded and run down as well Previously, this was a Settle Carlisle Midland signal box, which I just find the red on them far too garish. Doesn't look real. So then we get to our last customs asset for this area of the route, which is the Golden Valley Light Railway Workshop. So that's this here. Brand new custom asset. Was something I wasn't going to bother doing, but because I'd done so many assets down this end of the line, and this was... West Somerset Railway Shed. It didn't look right, so I decided to do it. It was a fairly simple little asset to make. And it, again, just fills that area of the route here and makes it look more in keeping. It's not 100% accurate. It's just based on what reference material I could find for this shed. It's not somewhere you can really get to to photograph if you visit the line because this area around this side is all cut off from the public it's all railway line as you can see so it's a bit of an interpretation but it is mostly accurate from photographs that i could get again fills the space really really nice it's the real thing as well so if you want to have your screenshots down this and where the, uh, the diesel depot is or you want to use the golden valley light railway it just has far more of an accurate feeling and creates a much better atmosphere down here we've got Willerton Diesel Depot Shed, so this is from West Somerset Railway. Not a custom, but it is fairly accurate to the real thing. The shed itself is the right colour, the right shape, so I've not bothered fixing that. And also because it's tucked behind Swanick Diesel Depot, I've kind of left it. This is the A1A Class 31 Group's shed, I think, off the top of my head. And then we've got Swanick Diesel Depot, so this was from version 2. No changes to this whatsoever. Same as always. But again, just means this end of the line looks really, really nice. And it's important as well for me because you can see all of this from the station so easily. Looks really, really good. We'll now jump back into our 31 and we'll have our run down to Riddings. So there are no custom assets on the run down to Riddings currently. I may potentially do some of the, the bridges in the future. However, again... 
more custom assets and update to the route at the moment aren't a priority. Maybe something in a year or two. Ease our way out of Swanwick Junction. little change around here has been a lot of the foliage has been tweaked and then the grass embankment that was underneath the track has been changed to use the Vulcan Productions uh, road pack or track pack, I can't remember which one it comes in, but it's a freeway requirement. There have been little tweaks to the detail along this section so it should feel a little bit more real. One of the things I, I didn't like about this section right down to Riddings before was how generic and bland a lot of the scenery looked so I have tried to go over it all again and improve it. Some of the trees have been tweaked so you've got trees in individual trees placed for where they should be in real life to just create a bit more of a unique scene. Some of the grass has been tweaked as well. Photograph pole coming off the left has been added too. Just gives you some of those visual references so you feel like you're actually going down particular sections of the line. Because one of my bugbears with TS is just feeling like you're on an endless section of track that's just got trees either side and nothing's changing. But I've tried to make as much effort as I can make the route feel as though each section is unique but still accurate to what it is in real life passing passing under the footbridge there between the woodland burial ground and we're about to pass on the, the Golden Valley uh, main road I forget the road number there have been tweaks all along this section in terms of actual scenery it may not be obvious to notice it may look same as before but it is slightly improved so not having to accelerate down here because it is a 1 in 133 descent so we're just letting the train coast and gather speed naturally one little change that has been made around here that you probably can't see from the cab is that I can't even see it here the William Jessup uh, monument has been added. You can see that little chimney up there, so I've just represented it with a chimney. William Jessup Monument up here. William Jessup was a local builder from, I think, the Victorian era. I don't know if he built the, the Cromford Canal, perhaps? Going a little bit over the 10 mile an hour speed restriction at the moment. And in fact, we're going above 25, so we really did ought to slow down. done quite a bit with the foliage down here. Much, much happier with how this is looking. So here we are now down at Riddings. You've got the little village of Ironville on the right. The junction that we're about to pass over is the junction to the Arawash Valley main line. So you can take the track to, that diverges to the right to join the main line. We're going to carry on into the loop.
originally on the real Midland Railway line back in the day this would have curved into Pybridge Station which is just round to the left well it was just round to the left here not anymore this line the Midland Railway Butley line would have uh, joined between Pybridge and Ambergate bring our train to a halt here in the loop and then we'll take you for a look around because there have been quite a lot of scenery tweaks around this section of the line you can see here we are, are down in uh, Riddings Loop, stopped nicely. One of the big tweaks for this version is I have redone the uh, little grass field here between us and the main line. This was previously not low enough, so I've done that and swapped it. It did have BP grass, it's now got just an academy grass field. But it works a lot nicer, I think, and you can actually see the train up on the embankment as you would in real life. You can see the uh, Palisade fence here, the grey fence. That's where the main line is. We'll have a look at that in a second. Uh, there's also been some tweaks to the little road that runs under the line, so a little bit of extra detail has been added. Telegraph poles have been put in with the wires. Um, a little bit of extra Ground text detail. Telegraph pole comes through to the other side as well. Street lamps have been added too. To these little houses right by the line. Because obviously the line backs onto here. So really, really close to the line. You won't see it as much in summer. But in spring and winter you'll see it a lot better. Uh, these fields have been lofted out as well. Whereas they weren't before. A couple of little tweaks to the houses next to the line in Ironville as well. So some extra bits of detail around here. Then, if we take a look at the main line diversion here. So, this is the line from Butley to the main line. N not a whole lot of detail along here. It's kind of just to make it playable and usable. You can see it curves all the way around to the main line. And then we've got actual working, all working signals here. So... This is uh, an actual working signal so you can get back onto the main line. So you could do a scenario if you wanted to coming off but lay onto the main line. Little bits of detail here. We've got trackside cabinets, um, act accurate speed limits in place now. The track's all set up correctly for that. As mentioned, the change log. This now uses concrete sleepers. Bit of a harsh change there, but it's not too bad in my opinion. Uh, the scenery now all, all up here properly, so... This didn't really have any scenery properly. It was just 2D trees lining it. This is all correct now and runs as far as this bridge. Then it goes back to just bland because you shouldn't really need to go any further than this. The main thing is the fact that you can now start at the signals. Or you could do a rolling start just under the bridge. Up to the signal. To so go on to Butterley. Again, working signals here. And then equally, we can go down to the other end of the Arosh Valley line. And you can see we've got our train there, which is nice. The train through. That works vice versa as well. If you were to have a train, if you've come down for your run round, you could have uh, a mainline service along here, and you will see it. You'll also see it when you're in the run round loop head shunt. So then we come down here. So where the track bends here is where Pybridge Station would have been. Pybridge Station would have been here. Got the working gantry with all the signals on. All correct speed limits. Um, signals for this way too. Which is nice. And then the track's been extended as well. So you've got it diverging towards Mansfield on the right. And carrying on to Alfreton and then Chesterfield on the left. New portals have been added for this. So... Like I said, if you wanted to do a mainline service coming past as the train sat down in the in the uh, Riddings run round loop, you can now. So it adds that little bit of extra operational interest. Scenery's been extended as well, so trees have all been added in here. These weren't in before. Uh, little bits of extra uh, terrain been painted too. A little bit more up here, especially with these. Um, Hedgerows added in, so this looks a lot more accurate now. More trees added in. 
uh, this is Riddings, I believe, over this side. This has all been extended now, so it actually looks correct. Again, fields added in, a road added in, just creates that little bit of extra detail. And same has happened up this way. More, more trees, mostly, and a bit of terrain painting to make it look that bit better. So this has been a quick look at Midland Railway Buckley version 2.2. This is out currently. It came out a few weeks ago on on track simulations where you can download it. There is a version of the route available on Vulcan Productions that is outdated. That's version 1. If you want the latest version of this route, make sure you download it from uh, on track simulation. That's version 2.2. The manual is included and available to download on the website, so you can have a look through the manual before downloading the route if you want to check that you've got all the requirements for it. It's all listed in the manual, as well as more information about the line. So, yep, if you would like to have a go on this route that uh, you've seen today, do head up to OnTrack Simulation. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll leave a link in the description. Have a good day.